Hello, this is Hildron101010 from YouTube and part of Computer Clan on ComputingClan.com. <clears throat> I have a 3D animation tutorial for you today. And people want to learn 3D animation because 3D animation is cool and a lot of people are picking up on computer stuff because it's been, you know, going along a lot lately. So, I'm going to teach 3D animation in a Mac OS X application named Cheetah 3D. Cheetah 3D is a program for 3D animation that is free. The free version lets you use every single feature of the program except saving. So if you want to do saving, you got to purchase the full version. But just to test run it or do whatever, because you can still export videos, you just can't save projects. You can go to download and then click on the Cheetah 3D 4.7 disk image. It's from Mac OS 10.4 to 10.6. So it's Tiger, Leopard, and Snow Leopard. So once you have that done in your applications directory, it'll appear in a Cheetah 3D folder. It will appear somewhere in here, and then you would open it from there. But I dragged it into my applications directory itself and not in this folder, so I'm just going to launch it directly from here. Okay. This is laid out in a very elegant manner. You just have the toolbar up here, so you have your controls for adding objects and switching modes and stuff. Now, this isn't what it is by default. To customize it, you can right click and hit Customize Toolbar, and then you'll get more options. Hit Done when you're done. Then here you have properties to change settings for things such as the camera here. I have a resolution, color, shadow, stuff like that. In here you have the camera viewer. You can rotate and pan, and you can zoom using the zoom functions on your trackpad or mouse. And over here you have the camera view, for like front, back, left, right, top, bottom, your perspective and camera, and you have your styles for like anti-aliasing, and turning the grid on and off. And then down here you have the object browser, which are the objects you have in your 3D animation, which can be edited up here by clicking on them. Then you have takes to set different camera angles and stuff like that. And poses is a more advanced thing, and we can get into that later. I don't know much about that yet, but like I said, it's a more advanced thing. Down here you have your materials, which is where you store your textures and stuff, which we'll get into that as well. And then here you have your timeline where you set your keyframes. So I'm going to go through some pretty basic stuff. And we're going to make a very simple animation and model something very simple. So what we're going to do is go to the polygon option in the toolbar. Select polygon. And let's see, we will select... Hmm, how about relief? Yeah, you can do some cool stuff with that. Now it gives you like this mountainy, hilly type texture. And that's what that looks like. So if we go up here to our modes here, I'm going to select scale. Zoom out a little bit. This is the Z axis, which lets you drag upwards. So when you drag that upwards, you make it go up like this. And if you don't want to do the drag and dropping, like, you know, dragging the cube, dropping it somewhere else to adjust the size, if you're more of like a technical person and you'd like to do it over here in the properties inspector, you can do that too. Because if you change it in here, let's make this longer and make that wider. As you can see over here, it changes in real time. So we're going to keep it like that. Rotate the camera a little bit just by using the rotator up here. Make it kind of flat. So now we're going to give it a kind of a, a rocky-ish like texture. Like a canyon-like texture. And I know it sounds a little weird, but you want to use the wood material for that. So in the material inspector properties thingy here, click on add material. Little arrow here. Scroll down to wood. You have quite a few options in here, and they're highly customizable. You can also import your own pictures and mix colors and whatnot. So we'll select wood. So then you can see it shows up in here. And then over in the properties inspector, you have the colors here and your basic settings and advanced settings. So we're just going to use the default settings. You can tweak it yourself just in the properties there. So then you just take the material by dragging and dropping onto the object you want, and then you see the little plus sign. So now as you see, it turns that color, and it shows up in the object browser. Now you're like, what the heck? That doesn't look like wood. That looks nothing like it. Well, that's because it's not rendered yet. So if you actually expand this upwards, which is what we're doing, then you click this little button, 
It's a picture of the logo right here. It says render, render scene. You want to click that to get a full preview of your animation. As you can see, this is what it looks like. Now let's tweak the colors a little bit. So just click this and you get the basic color wheel. Brightness. Choose white. Here you get the actual render preview for the material. Here you don't. Not until you render it. So we'll render it again, and then it shows up like this. You can zoom in more by scrolling or by using the focusing tools here, or the magnifying glass, and rotate a little bit, and then click the render button again. And then you get a different rendered view of your project. To see previous renderings, you can click this button here. It says open object, open job manager. Sorry, did not mean to say object. You render objects in the job manager. So then these are ones that I've done previously. For a project I was doing, the Mac OS X Snow Leopard intro video, here are some previous renderings that I've kept because you can save them again, like if you did this a while ago. This one took 5.95 seconds to render. You can go up to the little hard drive icon, click that, and you can still save it. It even works for motion video. And here are some other renderings I've been doing. So to close that, you just close it by pressing the button. And to stop rendering a project, you hit stop. So if you're rendering something but you want to cancel it, don't just close it. Hit stop because otherwise the project will be locked and it will not let you get access to there until you go back into there. And another way to get to the render manager is click on the render option in the menu bar and hit show render manager. And you will get the same result by getting the render manager and you can open and close the job window thingy. What exactly does it call it? Manager. Okie doke. Alright, all fantastic wrapped in plastic. So, now making a basic animation. I'm just doing a lot of the basics here for 3D animation tutorials, and then we'll go into more things in an advanced manner separately. So we click on the relief thing in the object browser here, and here we have the settings. And now we can modify it in the timeline. So click the little record button, and you see you get a blue marker here. And drag the playhead to the end of the animation. We'll say about two seconds. And then click the record button after you set your keyframes and your object changes whatever you want to do. So right now I've set nothing, so it would be kind of pointless. So what should we do? We should make this grow. So I'm going to expand it. I'm going to go into here. Type in 10. Whoa. Excuse me. Type in 10. See, that was really the Y axis to make it go up and down. That's weird, because usually Z is the 3D thing. But anyway, forgetting that mistake, it's not really that important. You can just change it in the properties thingy. So after you set the height, press the record button again. And now you have the animation. It gradually gets bigger. And by taking the scroll bar here, you can drag the number of frames and adjust it to what you want so you can set the timeline here. And then you can have it loop by pressing the play button. So there you go. Now to render this video, click on the little animation button here. And now it'll render it frame by frame. Now this takes a while. Because it has to image each frame and put it into a sequence. And you can see down here how fast it's kind of going, actually, because it's kind of a low resolution. So once this playhead gets all the way to here, the render is completed. But for now, let's just stop it by pressing the stop button. And you can preview what we have so far. Kind of got messed up, but as you can see, y you get the idea. I just didn't want to have to do the whole rendering, but the thing is, it works. So to save a project, you just click the little save button, and then you give it the name or whatever. And that is it for this tutorial, but that is not it for all the tutorials. There are going to be more coming soon, because 3D animation is a really cool concept to learn, and I will see you later.